Hi guys! Hello, welcome to another video. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank everybody who's watching, all your comments, everybody who's subscribed. And if you're watching and you haven't subscribed, do so, it's free. Yes. It would help us out. Yes, it would. It would be absolutely awesome. Absolutely. Even though it's not a competition. <laughs> but we are losing. <laughs> <laughs> so, this yeah. week's been one of those weeks again. If we didn't have bad luck, we wouldn't have any luck at all. I know. <laughs> but, bacon. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. Enjoy. The culprit is very interested. <laughs> yes, he is. Oh, the lad. He still has his separation anxieties. And we closed the door the other week now. And he actually snapped the key off. Yeah. And we've been dealing with it because we're intending to replace the door. Not yet. But unfortunately, the door wouldn't lock at o'clock this morning. Yes. <laughs> so until very early o'clock this morning, I was taking this lock apart to get the key out. Yep. So I locked it up overnight, and then managed to unlock it again. We're using a screwdriver to turn, because the blade's still in the door. So now, I'm going to take it off, and Lillian's going to take it to a ferreteria with the key out, and see if they can do something with it. Yep. We are going to be replacing this door, but we haven't planned to do it yet, so we'll find out if it can be done, and if it can, the only other option is another lock. And these locks are very, very hit and miss. Yeah, it's a really old thing. But this is just weird as well. Instead of having like a proper grub screw or something, it's a wood screw. <laughs> and it's well, 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 well old. Right, I'm about to put that back in there so I don't lose it. And these are also a form of a wood screw as well, but it's a metal door. I only put these two screws back in instead of the other ones that go that way. Because it was only for overnight and then the intention to remove it. Crazy. It's a very old door. It is. No idea how old, but it's old. Let's go outside where there's some light. Good state of it. <laughs> that is weird design as well. It's not what we're used to. We did one of the other ones. It was for that door, wasn't it? It was. I undid the back plate. And it all just sprung out everywhere. But it did, lucky it? with this one, it doesn't. Right, I just wiggled it and it's come loose. There, it's out. So I was actually trying to push the key out by putting a rod through there. But it didn't work like that. Unless that's another key that's in there. I don't know. The remains of the key is just there. And that's all that's left of the key. I don't think you'll be able to do it. No, I doubt it, but I can but ask the question. Yes. Because uh, the little twisty bit that you put your fingers on is literally just there. Yep. So if you take this lock with you. Lillian's back. With a key. Yay! And it has a friend. And it works. I'll just leave it in now. Um, it was a pain in the bum to put this all back together again. Uh, this bit kept popping out and then that bit kept popping out, but anyway, it's all back together again now. So, I can't find where I put them screws. I put them for safekeeping, but I'm not sure whereabouts I safely put them. Door that locks, or we'll have in a few minutes. Yay! Awesome. Right, I'll put his wood screws back in. 
<laughs> yes. Yeah, well, you know the door closes. Yo, make it lock. Put the key out. Put the key back in. Make it unlock. Open the door. Woohoo! Yeah, well, uh, I'm off out for the day now. Yeah? I just want the door to be open. Okay. okay. Yeah. That, was, that was a quick visit wherever you went. I know, I forgot my wallet, did I? There's no point, it's only full of moths. Exactly. So an update on where we are with the tourist licence, paperwork and such like. Yes. We received the paperwork that we needed from the town hall. Just Eventually, as you know, that was been a battle in itself, but received that. And I then had to find out how to submit it to hire people to the Valencian Comunidad to ask for a tourist license. Along with that, as and when we get our license, I also need to find out, we need to have a complaints book, an hojas de reclamaciones. It's a legal requirement for any business in Spain, whether it be a rental, a shop or whatever, you have to have this, it's self-duplicating um, it's not duplicating, but um, yeah, there's 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 four, four four copies. When you write the top copy, and it writes all the way through. Yes, you have to legally have one of these books. There you go. So any property, uh, any company that you buy from in Spain or use their services, yes, must have one, and it's illegal for them to refuse you to have access to it. Mm -hmm. If you've got a legitimate complaint, um, you are entitled to request this complaints book and if they refuse you go to the local police and then they sort it out for you it is a legal document and they are not allowed nobody's allowed to refuse your access to that as a complaints book absolutely the only people that don't have to have a complaints book is people who obviously trade online online shops don't have to have it and there is access to the online version of it yes but if you are a physical entity of any description property shop bar, anything, you have to have an Ojas de Camaciones book. I don't know where to get one. Um, I don't know whether I have to have a special one printed for us because it's got our reference number on it or whether I just go down to the paper shop and get it. Don't know, I've got to look into that. Yes. That's part one. Yes. <coughs> part two is... Um, <coughs> exit signs. Oh yeah, we need ex exit signs <laughs> on the inside. Exit one, exit two. Yes. Entrance one, entrance two. <laughs> exactly. Okay. We need things like that. Um fire extinguishers, I mean, there's stuff that is useful for people to use, but there are stuff that legally we have to have, fire extinguishers, fire blanket, exit signs. Um, I don't know, I've got I've got a book somewhere that I've just started writing lists and the list just keeps growing and growing and growing. That's it. Um, I have to... We have to get a plaque. If we get permission for the tourist license, yeah. then we have to have an identification plaque. Um, and that's to be put somewhere on the property. Obviously, we'll find that out later, but we need to also find out where to get this plaque from because it's not actually issued, apparently, from all the research. No, they just issue you with your number and then you have to go somewhere. I don't know whether the local hardware shop will make them or whether I've got to go somewhere online. So that that's, that's just something else I don't know. Yes. Um, I also have to register with the police because as a tourist accommodation... When people come to stay, as same as in a hotel, you have to show your passport and your details as to who you are, and they then pass that on to the local police. We will be doing that. Whether I do that with the town hall police, whether it's the next one up, which is Pinoso, or whether it's even higher up, which is Elder, I don't know. I've got to find this out. Yes. With, you see, you, you probably think to yourself, oh, you should have found all that out before. But we didn't know the paperwork of which part of paperwork we needed to do and where. And we actually believed that some parts were issued as part of the tourist license pack. And we've since discovered it no longer is the case. Yes, yeah. I figured when you apply for a license, you get a pack back saying, here's all your stuff and you owe us so much money for your book, your, pl your plate, your this, your that, which would make sense to me. I apply for a thing, here it is, give us, I don't know, an arbitrary number of, of euros, and here is all your stuff, here is your kit. Yeah, your resources are here. Yes, don't work like that. Don't work like that, no. <laughs> no. 
Uh, so yeah, lots of things to find out. Lots, lots and lots of things to buy. But mm. it's the finding out bit that the minute that I'm working on, I'm not buying, I'm not jinxing until I have got this blinking license, this registration number. So finding out at the moment. So that's a wasp. <laughs> A really wasp. Well, that was the first wasp of the season, I think. <laughs> we haven't seen many. We haven't seen many, no. no. So, that's where we're at. It has been submitted. We are waiting. I am doing research. Well, they say don't trust animals when they're too quiet. Again. Yeah. So, Freya's destroyed the outlet pad for the reverse osmosis system. Again. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, that's the way it is, I suppose. At least we had some spare paint. So, and now I've got to take it all apart because of the connection I've got to take off. So I've got to remove the whole system yeah. just to get to it, which is a bit of a silly, silly design, really. I might actually look at if I could extend the pipe on the inside. So, I'm going to remove this, and then I'll show you what Frey's done outside. So it should come out of the wall there. And then we had it going down, running behind these concrete blocks under that gate. And you can see the remains of it there. And then it goes that way and down into the bottom field. However, somehow she's moved this concrete block. I'm saying her because she was the one carrying it around in her mouth. She's pulled this away and managed to chew it. Okay, so what Lillian's trying to do is push the extra little bit of pipe, well it's not a bit of pipe, the extra pipe, hopefully back out of this wall. And then we're hoping to use it so we can pull the whole lot out, but I'm not sure that's gonna work yet. Okay. Dover, mind. Yeah, it's through. Perfect, just stop there please. Right, so we've taped, or well, Lillian's just been out and taped this, and now I've got this roll, so I need to push as she pulls. Right, you ready? Yeah. Um, let me push, and you just guide. Yeah. Tell me when it's through. through. Excellent. Right. Um, we now I need, need to swap. I'll come and guard that. You come and do whatever you need to do in here. Well, they, they need separating now. Okay. Have you got enough to get to easily separate it? Not really. Can I take a little bit more? Yeah, no, take I can. A, yeah. And just see those little scissors? Because that edge isn't cut square anyway. Open it. The pipe goes into the divot. Yeah. And then you push down where the cutter is and do it straight. Straight? Me? You've got no chance. It does do it straight on its own. Does it? Yeah, because even I can do it. Oh! Yay! And then, you know the hole the other one came out of? Yes. That one needs to go in there now, please. Okay. So, it's all hooked up again. I've neatened it up as well, actually. Uh, I've left a bit of paper towel down there to see if there's any drips. I'll put another little bit there. I'll come back and check on it in a while. I don't feel any drips. I've wiped around all the connectors with paper towel as well, and it's all dry, but you never know. The exhaust is working now. It's refilling its little barrel storage tank. But look at all that waste, all that wasted water. It's crazy, these systems, really. But it still works out less expensive than buying bottled water. Yeah, exactly, yeah. This has turned into a major incident. Yeah, we're trying to protect it this time more. Yes. It's still going to end up going that way, but until we've got everything else in our lives sorted, this is it. So, I'm going to put clips on, and I'll put three on, overkill, but hopefully that'll stop that one from ripping them to pieces. Yep. So, we've got the line, and now I need to make a, a mark where I want the clips and get the holes drilled. Okie dokie. Right, I'll come back when that's done. Right, let's see if I marked them in the correct place. Looking good so far. Yes. Is it more luck than judgment though? <laughs> no, of course not. It's planned. Oh, 
shoot, I've tightened it too much. You did say be careful not to tighten it too much. I did. You just put the screwdriver in the slot. And use it as a lever. Yeah, and use it as a lever, it shouldn't break it. We do have spares in there, don't we? Oh, there, yes. There we go, right, perfect. Well that doing, that's taken most of the morning up. Another wall, one's down there. I've actually drilled holes in the IBC and I've actually leveled it off, which was actually, which was easy to do. So, filling that now, it's not ideal. All these weeds were supposed to have been cleared by now. We did actually pay for somebody to come along and spray them with nuclear killing stuff but hasn't worked as usual so we're filling that so that's no more wasted water from the overflow brilliant right I'm gonna get out this sun because it's really really hot and we've wasted the morning already but that's fine such is life welcome to cooking with Chris <laughs> I'm not cooking I'm curing <laughs> Okay, welcome to Curing with Chris. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is some back bacon, thin style back bacon. Um, I think in the, in the US, and that you call it Canadian bacon, I don't know. Um, in the UK we have three different main kinds of bacon. We have back bacon, we have streaky bacon, and then we also have collar bacon. So collar bacon is from the shoulder, the, the back bacon is the loin, and the streaky bacon is the belly. Yep. And you also have middle bacon, which is a combination of the loin and the belly. And then obviously we have gammon, as we call it. And when it's cooked, it's called ham. But in other parts of the world, it's call it ham. It's very confusing, but everybody has their own names for everything. But it's basically this. I got this from the supermarket because it was on offer. Unfortunately, there's no fat. It should have a nice covering of fat. But what we're going to do, I'm going to do it with honey, supermarket honey, instead of the good stuff, and curing salt. Now this is the curing salt that's already pre-made and it's already done to the correct ratios. Um, the manufacturer where I bought it from says 40 grams per kilo. So I've done the maths and we want 50 grams for this piece of meat. So first, I'm going to cover it with honey, give it a nice thin covering, don't need too much and then put salt on, and then put it in that bag, and put it in the fridge. And looking at the thickness of this, I would say it's gonna take about a week. Um, it's normally one day per centimeter at the thickest part of the meat, plus one day, and that's it. And the actual process is you, you flip it every day. So starting tomorrow, it'll be flipped over, and it's just the way, just the way you do it. So, that's what I'm going to do. Even though it's a supermarket when it still smells really nice. I think that'll be plenty. And also in the UK, we don't partially cook it or hot smoke we only do a cold smoke and the temperature never gets very high uh, there are actually the shortcuts nowadays you can get from the butcher suppliers and another online places you can actually buy it now with powdered liquid smoke to give you your smoke flavor it's not as good in my opinion but it works Right, that's a nice covering. You can actually cure with honey just on its own, but uh, that's not something I would uh, dabble with if you want to keep it for a long time. I don't know if it keeps for as long. Right, next, this is going in the bag, and then I'll add the salt. Okay, right, next, the salt goes in. You don't do the salt first and then put the honey on because it couldn't wash the salt off. And it's basically just chuck them in. Bit more. 
and just spread it about. You don't have to rub it in. Pinch well. <laughs> we know we're doing the vacuum bag. Yes. Um, right. A little bit left for the sides. Doesn't need to be really, really thick. That's the thing. You think, oh, I haven't got enough salt. You have. Okay, right, just get this last little bit in. There you go, that's that. Silver bag, well oh, actually, I'll get some air out first. Don't need to get loads of air out. It is more, slightly more efficient than a vacuum bag and literally only putting it in the bag because it's less messy. And that's it. I decided to run around and put it in the fridge today, that way. And then tomorrow it will turn that way, remembering to move that over. As you can see, look, the salt. And then the day after you do it like that and you continue. So right, we'll come back and see what this is like in a couple of days. Yes. Also, I forgot to mention, we store the baking cure in the freezer. It doesn't affect it in any way, shape or form. But what it does do is it stops it from absorbing moisture from the air. Um, could have it in a, a sealed tub, but ideally you want it vacuum sealing. So storing it in the freezer works. Last week was plumbing on a Sunday. This week it's mechanicking on a Sunday. Yes. Hey, what's all this? <laughs> all that weird muck because we had all that wind and then that splash of rain. Yeah. Whipping again, it's just made it all filthy. Strange. I thought it was a, a, a coolant leak or a, a something leak, but it's not. No. No, that's weird. Anyway, what I've got to do is I need to change the front brake pads on the car. Uh, I could get a mechanic to do it, which I don't know how much that'll cost. I don't think it's that cheap, really. But I can do it. So, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Stay your legs. Oh, I know, I know. That's this side done. Yep. Now, I've learnt a lesson. Don't trust the warning indicators because these pads are well, well, well worn and the warning indicator didn't warning indicate. Yep. Uh, there's not a lot left. Okay. Yep. Wow. Not right even, down. Right down. And the warning indicator goes into this. This side. Yeah, that side. Yeah. And it had worn through the warning indicator. And the warning indicator didn't, didn't go off. That's bad. Very. That's really bad. That's dangerously bad. For sure. Luckily, it just started touching the metal and it hasn't damaged that disc, thankfully. If it had, okay, would have had to have bought new discs. Yep. Uh, so that side's done and I need to do the other side. And I've also discovered that it needs a brake fluid change. Okay. The brake fluid is black. Ooh. It was fine, it, it was changed before we set off. Yeah. We have, okay, it's been a long time, but we haven't actually done that much distance, really. So. That's a job that we're going to have to get a mechanic for because I don't know how to do it on a car. I know it's simple in theory, but I don't want to be damaging this ABS system here. So if we get a mechanic to do it, it's all done properly. Okay, yep. So I'll have to get that booked in. Right, right to the other side. Okay, so this is my janky setup. It works. Tires under there in case it falls off the jack. It won't. Uh, I used to have axle stands, but we ended up leaving them in the UK. So, before I dis the other one was destroyed on the pad sensor, there's still meat on there. I don't know if it's picking up, 
Well, there it's one through the sensor, which should have created a current, a circuit, to warm the car. Oh dear. Anyway, this piston is out as far as it'll go and I can't push it back. The same as the other side. So I made up a tool. Now, this brake caliper piston pushing back tool I bought many years ago when I had a, a Volkswagen Passat. And it needed to wind the um, caliper piston back in as opposed to pushing it. So what I've done is I've made it to go on an old brake disc, which is then push square on the piston and then wind it back. And it worked, so no worries there. Right, I'll get it wound back. There we go, it's wound back. So I'll do is just turn it off, pull that pad out. Don't stress the brake pipe. Let's hang it back up again now and get a new brake pads in. I should have done a comparison with new and old pads, but that's the thickness of the new ones. And that's from the same position. They've worn pretty well. But feeling the lip on the disc, it's not excessive, but next pad change, it's got to be the whole set. Uh, the other problem is that, where is it there? That the brake disc kit the uh, brake pad kit, should I say, didn't come with these spring things and also only came with one bolt with a thread lock on it. Now I just put thread lock on that bolt and uh, this one comes pre-done. pre, pre -done. Well, They're going all right, so that's okay. All right, I'll get them torqued up, get the wheel on, Get the brakes pumped. This is a great tool for lining your wheel back up. I bought that on eBlag because we didn't come with one. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, for, for lining the wheel up. Right, I get these tightened up. Oh, I've nipped up here and then finally tightened on on the ground obviously I don't want to be doing that if it's not going to work I need them nipping up a little bit just to line it up Front brake's done. Well done. Uh, with that in mind, I'm going to have to check the backs, the back brakes for wear. Yep. Uh, I'm not doing that now because uh, it's too sunny and hot. Uh, yeah, that flow is really, really, really dark, so that needs replacing. Okay, yes. 120 newton meters apparently. I don't know how many meters newton used to run, but it's awfully tight. Because <laughs> I don't have a torque wrench that's capable of that. We run it a couple of days, put a few miles on it, and then recheck. Okay. Just kind to for Chris to wash his hands from having dealt with the car before he takes it for a test drive. And I just said, oh, do we not need to turn our bacon? So this has really been turned once, turning it again today. But just before I do, can you see all that liquid in there? Can you see all that? Yeah, it's already looking bacon color. So it's only already looking bacony color and it's getting solid. It doesn't feel fleshy anymore. It's starting to feel toffee-ish. Want to put a description? <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's doing its thing. Still got a long way to go. Absolutely, so it's been that way. So you turn it that way. Another 24 hours. Yes, and that's it. That's all it takes. Yeah, ideally you want to strain the, let the liquid come off, but that's got a lot of honey in it and we're still waiting, wanting the honey to go in. So yeah. if it wasn't honey, 
<coughs> if it wasn't honeyed, we'll be tipping that away. We're tipping that away, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. To make a true dry, dry, uh, dry cure. Yeah. As opposed to that, like a dry brining. Okay, right. We'll come back now when it's done because there's no point in doing it once a day or once every other day to fill to, to, to fill it. it. No, no, I no, appreciate it. So when we, when we actually take it out, which will probably be in another three days, we've been going two days, haven't we? We're, we're yeah. reckoning about another three days. Anyway, whatever day we choose, we'll unwrap it and show you what the next stage is. Thanks for watching Tales from the Caveside. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Drop us a like and leave us a comment. See you on the next one.